This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. The state is recommending Frontier Middle School shooter Barry Lukaitis be resentenced to 189 years in prison. A group of students in Ephrata spent Wednesday morning participating in an egg drop. A family is raising money for a 3D printer to create a prosthetic hand for their daughter. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The state is recommending Frontier Middle School shooter Barry Lukaitis be resentenced to 189 years in prison. The recommendation was filed Thursday in Grant County Superior Court, seeking a combined 60 years for two counts of aggravated murder in the first degree and an additional 1,555 months for the remaining convictions. In a handwritten letter from the now 36-year-old, Lukaitis stated he will not fight the court-ordered resentencing. More than a dozen victims and survivors have requested to speak during a hearing. Lukaitis also indicated he wishes to address the court. In the letter, Lukaitis writes it is his wish to defer to the desire of the victim's families in the resentencing and, after 21 years, issued an apology. Lukaitis also reflected back to the day of the shooting, recognizing the heroic acts of students and teachers as well as the victims. Lukaitis was 14 in 1996 when he shot and killed a teacher and two students and injured another student at Frontier Middle School in Moses Lake. He was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole and an additional 205 years in prison. In 2012, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled mandatory life sentences without parole for children younger than 18 violated the Eighth Amendment. The state legislature followed the decision with a change in the state law allowing children convicted of aggravated murder in the first degree to be eligible for parole after 25 years. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. A group of students in Ephrata spent Wednesday morning participating in an egg drop. The Classical Conversation homeschool group of 49 students, ages 4 to 11, had been working the last couple weeks to build an egg protector device using only rubber bands, popsicle sticks, and napkins. On Wednesday morning outside the community church of Ephrata, the students put their contraptions to the test, dropped from a bucket truck at various heights. Each round, the contraptions were dropped from an increased height as fewer and fewer raw eggs survived the fall. Inside the church, the students also displayed their bridge-building skills as weight was added to bridges made of plastic straws, with the winning bridge holding up 5 pounds. Classical Conversations is a homeschool co-op and participates in weekly community days with art and science projects along with other activities. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. At first glance, Milana Polapon doesn't appear to be any different than most young girls her age. But Milana was actually born missing part of her left forearm and hand. From early on, she wore a regular fitted prosthetic. For her, it's a struggle sometimes to wear that. The weight and bulkiness, though, of it made it tough for Milana to use at such a young age. So Katie researched prosthetics made from 3D printers. The technology was first introduced in 2008. Made from plastic, these state-of-the-art prosthetics were lighter and more advanced. They're on pulley systems, so you could have your hand open and close. You could make attachments for her to play the violin, for her to play instruments. And that's not all. The 3D prosthetics allow kids to ride bikes, play catch, and do just about anything other kids can do. And at a cost that is probably cheaper than you'd think. So $2,500. <laughs> Katie and her husband are hopeful that, with the community's help, they can purchase a 3D printer for Milana for her birthday when she turns two on Saturday. Hopefully by midnight of her birthday, I could place the order. What better thing I could give for my daughter instead of buying her a toy or buying her something for her birthday than being able to make something that us people have two hands. And Katie has a plan for the printer that includes much more than just her daughter. She plans on helping design other prosthetics for other kids in need. That way we could just get this whole process started, start on making her hands, figuring out how it all works, so that way we could 
give back to the community as well. From the i one Weather Center, I'm Jeff Slakey taking a look at the Basin's forecast. For your Monday, upper 50s and partly cloudy. Partly cloudy for Tuesday, upper 50s and a chance of rain as we move into Wednesday, where we'll be in the mid 50s and expect about a quarter inch of rain. Thursday through the rest of the week into the weekend, upper to mid 50s and clear skies. For iFiber One, I'm Jeff Slakey. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiber1.com or check us out on Facebook.